Hi everybody, I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the Streeters. Streeters. Welcome to tonight's live stream. We'll be answering all your questions about stained glass. So if you have a question, put it in the chat with a Q. And welcome everyone. Yeah, welcome to the live stream. And it's glass night on Monday here at the RDR RV's channel. <laughs> If you are going to be watching this after the live stream, after the live, it'll be on YouTube. You can come back and watch it again or you catch it tomorrow morning. Some people will be catching it tomorrow morning when they wake up. Right, right. And so, our, uh, our friends over in Oklahoma, he catches it on his way home from work tonight. So <laughs> Yeah. So. Yeah. So But anyway, hey, we had a great week, Barb. Had a great weekend and uh, we've been very busy here around the studio of course like we always are and I think we've got a lot of good questions uh, tonight that were sent in via email and we've got a lot of people in the chat room tonight Barb. yeah and glass chat's gonna be good it's gonna be talking about what are you gonna be talking about well he's gonna be cutting bevels for yeah one we're gonna show you how to cut a bevel and to let you know that don't be afraid of it because it's just a little bit thicker glass than you're use, used to using. But it's much softer. So. And then we're going to be talking about how to make pendants out of your scrap glass. Just a real easy process. We have a video. We had a question about it. So we just show you some easy way to use Yeah, and it just adds a little bit. You know, if you're doing shows and stuff, this these little $10 items that you can put out there will uh, hopefully help your bottom line and, and make your show that much better more fantastic for you so so i want to give a shout out to ray hey ray hey ray everybody Hi. give ray a thumbs up we thank ray he keeps everything going smoothly thanks for being here tonight ray we appreciate it and, and you know what 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 we need to thank sunshine glassworks for okay. sponsoring this show tonight and we want to thank them because when you all of your glass needs your tool needs and everything give sunshine a call They'll be happy to help you out. We want to thank Sunshine again for sponsoring tonight's show. 
So we're just glad everybody checked in, even if you can't hang out for the full uh, 60 minutes that we're here. Thank you for coming in. Come back and watch the video. We had a lot of people watching last week. We sure did, and it so, was because like, Barb kept informing me, and I was like, wow, this is really, it was really it was nice. It really good. Yeah. It was really good. So people are interested. They go back. They look at the uh, all the things going on. What happened? Nothing. I, I just took sunshine. Oh, down. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That Ooh, 65 hey. seconds on that one. I know. That's good. That's good. That's a there minute ad for sunshine. There are great great sponsor of of the show and they're also uh, not only are they customers but we're their customers so and you know what i want to thank you guys for letting sunshine know that you watch the rdrv channel when you call them to place your orders and it's it's just nice to know that because if they know that they're you are ordering from watching our show and they're sponsoring it, they're going to stay with us. So we appreciate that. Please let them know that you do watch the RDRV channel. So. Yeah, it's very appreciated. It, Thank it, you. It's greatly appreciated. So happy glass night, everyone. We're so glad to have you here. Uh, let's start out with a question from I am Alan. Okay, let's go. Uh, Alan asked, I have a sheet of window pane from the early 1900s that has been identified as Florentine. Ooh. It's one quarter inch thick. Can I bevel the edges one sixteenth on each side to make the joints match a one eighth inch profile? Uh, you can, Alan. That's, that's really neat that you have that Florentine glass. Uh, yeah, that was a very common glass actually back in the 20s and 30s it was used a lot in uh, obscure areas many many uh, sitcoms that you see on TV Perry Mason and all that he has those glasses in his doors and everything in his office so yeah and you know get back to your question Alan you can bevel that down a little bit to go ahead and get that that look that you're looking for so that everything will line up for you and that that Florentine is just such a pretty glass it's still available now. It's made by Pilkington, and it's um, it's quite expensive. So use in it. In one utilize. quarter inch, they, they st oh yeah they do. Do they make no? It in they're one making quarter? an eighth inch. Oh okay. Now. Well, three kind of. It's not quite. It's a little bit bigger than uh, an eighth, but not quite as fat as three sixteenth. So and you can get it tempered too. Yes, correct? they will temper that glass. So so if you um, have a bathroom, an old house that has a bathroom window. That needs the tempered or a door glass. That yeah, needs but that, tempered, that Florentine that, glass, I don't know where you found really it, nice. but uh, hopefully it was easy to clean up because a lot of it is so dingy when you do find it that it's really hard to clean, Alan. But that's a good question. And since tonight we're talking about bevels anyway, so yeah, you can knock that down quite, quite efficiently to make it work for you. Yeah, that'll work. Sure will. So if you have a question, just leave it in the comments with a Q. Just want to let you all know, if you're local, we have a make and take coming up this Saturday. We have a few availabilities. Or if you're coming into Myrtle Beach, we are Anyone? right near Myrtle Beach. We're only 30 minutes away, sometimes yeah. 45 minutes away. But it's only 11 miles, no matter how you look at it. It's just traffic. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, but we're close to the beach. We're close to North Myrtle Beach, uh, the South End, and Myrtle Beach, kind of like right in the middle. Right. And I think um, we're about 11 miles from everybody. We just are. About, so. And then in uh, next month, we have two avails in the lead class. So if you're local or if you come into uh, this area, right. sign up. You can go to conwayglass.com forward slash visit. And that'll take you to the, to the uh, information. Yeah, so we have two people for the lead, or two availabilities for the lead light class next month. And uh, the only prerequisite for that class is that you are proficient at cutting glass because we spend very little time on learning how to cut glass. So. so you will make a little panel and it will be framed in wood when you leave so you can hang it in your window. Yeah. So anyway, it's a fun class. If that's something you're interested in and have always wanted to do a lead light class, we've got it available for you next month, the month of August. It's lead light time. Yeah. So I uh, just want to tell you all that. Uh, okay. Let me see if I'm missing any questions here. Okay. Why are my okay? Let me know if I've missed somebody, but here's one from Patty Austin. Question. Hey, hey. Why are my cutters 
skipping and sliding on the glass. I have a new Toyo, and it's happening with this one too. I'm not a beginner, but I feel like one. Do you have oil? Is it oil? Maybe. Well, I don't know that it's, it, it's oil, but it could be that, you know, and, and whether you're a beginner or not, uh, a lot of times your cutter will slide if, if you're not if you're not holding your cutter straight, or it will also slide and if you're cutting textured glasses, and since you're, you know, you're not a novice, I'm not exactly sure what you're doing. Um, you could uh, send us a video of, take, have somebody take a video of you cutting that glass and let's see what you're doing, if you're doing anything wrong. Because it, it doesn't sound like it's the cutter, um, it sounds like it's just the way that you're holding the cutter and is, is it a pistol grip cutter or is it a, uh, pencil grip? Because I'm going to tell you right now, the pistol grips, you'll slide around on those. You, you, unless you're really used to using that pistol grip, you will push that thing around and slide it sideways and you, yeah, your glass won't break that way. So, but I'm not, I'm not sure if you have a, uh, Patty, don't, if, use, don't if, use too much oil either. That'll yeah, and don't use too much oil. But Patty, let us know since you're here. Go ahead and let us know at least what cutter you're using, whether it's a pistol grip or a pencil, and then I'll kind of maybe we can come back to you and see if we can figure something out for you. Huh? Uh, Val wants to know: Does a bottle of black patina have an expiration date? I have a 15-year-old bottle, and maybe I'm better off not trying it. You know, I, I don't know if it has an expiration date because it's it's basically copper, copper sulfide. But uh, I would say the crystals are probably all chunked up in the bottom. And when you shake it up, it's not going to dissolve like it should. So, yeah, I would go ahead and dispose of that safely and go ahead and get you another bottle. I, me personally, <laughs> I disagree. Okay. Can I disagree? You can. <laughs> Hold uh, on. I would just do a test. I would just, you know, test it out. Try it on a piece of, you know, just do a solder and try yeah. it on a piece of solder and see what it does. Yeah, and shake it up really well. Yeah, shake it up. Get all the crystals in. You know, shake it up well, really well. Because they will settle to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I Just test it. Come to it think does. of it, I have no idea how old that bottle of black patina is in my studio. You never know. I know right? i got a couple you new ones. You throw but it away. You know, that one is really, yeah, if, but anyway, try it out. Shake it up well, though. He'd shake throw it away well. and I'd see if it would work. It might not do anything, but I kind of think you know, it, it will. It, it won't hurt to try it, though, Barb, so that is. That's yeah. a good idea. Thank yeah. you, Ag. That's a great idea. Barbara has great ideas because she's very efficient <laughs> and uh, intuitive. Is uh, yeah, I mean. well, she's okay. efficient, too, because she, you know, she's. She makes sure everything is done right. Thank you, Ed. That's right. A.K. Martin News hey. has a question. Okay. I have been having some good luck using the Scrub Daddy paste cleaning the old glass. It's not a, a question. She's just letting us know she's been having a really... The Scrub uh, Daddy? Yeah, success with the Scrub Daddy. I love those Scrub Daddies. I got... One Three. for each room. I got one for each room. Oh my room. God, we got scrub and daddies everywhere. I haven't everywhere. tried it on the glass yet, but yeah, that's probably going to work pretty okay. good. Good. I'm glad you're making progress that's, on that. You know, I thought about when she when we was just reading that. You know, we might want to. We're cleaning these hundred year old lamps right now. Oh, I'm not using that. I don't need that for that. Oh, okay. It's not that bad. No. No. Okay. No. That's what I've been busy doing, cleaning lamps. We picked Can't up a job last you. week. Yeah, they're so beautiful. And then we're kind of got me sidetracked. And we're making panels too. So right, I, I kind of got sidetracked. Yeah. Uh, but we, we uh, like fooling with these slag glass lamps. So. Texas Tom, nice to see you out tonight, my friend. Yeah, hope you're feeling well, Texas Tom. When painting on glass, uh, you. Okay, I can't. You don't see. have to worry about the coefficient of the glass when you're painting on glass. The only time you have to worry about the coefficient of glass is if you're adding another piece of glass to it, which in turn needs to be the same uh, coefficient or be compatible to that. So, but the paint doesn't change the glass. No, and you can paint on all kinds of glass. You can paint on window glass. Now you might get a little bit of change in color when you're working on say Wismac or 
or uh, well bullseye of some glasses bullseye. some you of their glasses get, change you might get a little uh changing color right. but, but you know the thing about the paints though barb is they don't go up high enough to divertify the glass right and so like the paints that we use the rochets the the paints that we use they uh they only run up to like you know eleven seventy five, twelve fifty, and usually if you don't go any higher than that, your glass won't divertify anyway. So yeah, I was just reading online about some problems people were having with the silver stain, a rainbow effect on the silver stain. But I really think that's from painting on the tin side, of or painting on the opposite of the tin side, one or the other. Yeah, because you know when the uh, what the the reason that they call. I'm not sure. Float glass, float glass, or window glass is float glass. Plate glass is float glass. Tabletop glass is float glass, because when it after it's run, it it stay, it's on a it floats on a bed of tin, as it goes down the line. And that tin side, they recommend that you don't paint or use enamels on the tinned side of the glass. And they also make a machine that tells you the tin side. And there's also a uh, a, uh, a, I guess there's a, a technique that you use to find out which side is the tin side by some sort of a reflection. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, you can look at it, but it, most of the time, you know, when Barbara and I are painting, we're painting on uh, on light colored uh, cathedral glasses. But we also we do paint on window glass, and and learning that you shouldn't paint on the tin side uh, changed our work quite a bit so it made the color stop doing bleeding and not wondering what we were doing with it and now we found out so. right and uh ak martinez good that that sounds great you um you're making progress with that and she said that she used scrub daddy paste too so that's good to know oh. that it removes watermarks because that that's the hardest that's to the get hardest out hardest thing and you know what we figured out too is we we got some crates of glass that had the watermarks on it had the cardboard paper in between them and that was stuck to the glass and i i have not even thought about cleaning up the sheets that i would really like to keep that are messed up with that scrub daddy so i'm welcome you know i'm, I'm gonna try that barb with one of them if it's okay texas tom oh You're man thank you i was looking for your message texas tom and there you go <laughs> Uh, that's all right did we answer your question correctly texas tom thank you so much thank you very much we appreciate it um i hope we answered your question how you need that it answered uh if you have another one just put it in the chat and thank you yeah thank you, again. Thank you very much texas tom we're glad you're feeling that's cute. i'm glad i can see that i couldn't see those before i don't know how we're seeing them now i don't know either it must be something new that the producer is taking done for us <laughs> I don't know. Or something that you've done. That is cute. Good, but it's all good. I like that. Thank okay, you. Okay, so if you have a question, put it in the chat. I did get a question about one of the uh, shorts that we did, and you were cutting a piece of glass that had two sides. Both were textured. Right. So they were kind of like, why are you cutting on the textured side? Well, because I actually, what yes. happens when I have... Uh, glasses that are textured on both sides. One side is usually uh, much more textured than uh, what I call the front side. So the back side, you can, you can always tell the back side when you catch light in it because it has a matte finish or just it's not really shiny. But then when if you have a, the glass and you turn it over, those dimples that are on the back side We'll transfer to the front, and I'm during glass chat tonight. We're going to be cutting one such piece of those glasses that is textured on both sides, and we're going to look at the difference from the front to the back, and we'll show you how to cut it correctly. Yeah, because that it, it's not. It's no, not. It's not yeah, easy. and it's not rocket <laughs> science, you know, because I'm definitely not a rocket scientist. Here. No. But I will say this. You know, if you're cutting on a glass that has a texture on two sides, but you enjoy the other texture, the other side better, just remember, flip your pattern over, still cut it on the smooth side, but when you're finished, you get to enjoy the side that you really like. So, so you can add that texture to your window. Sure, and every time you do that, it changes the way the window looks, 
and how how it greets people in their eyes when they look at it. Because you know sometimes the back of the glass is prettier than it's the front of the prettier. glass. much prettier. Yeah, yeah, much prettier. So this was a question, and it was in regards to the top five soldering tips. And that video is about two years old, but they were watching it and they wanted to know what size soldering tip you use. I use a, uh, typically I use a quarter inch soldering tip in my iron. Um, and I will use, I have a three eighths tip that fits into my hundred watt weller, but I also have a, a three eighths shank that has a quarter inch tip on it and usually I'll switch I'll switch between those two because if I'm doing big lead I'll use a 3 8 tip and if I'm doing copper foil work or delicate lead I will use a quarter inch tip. Yeah, so different tips for different, different jobs. Yeah, different jobs. Same iron, just different tips. Uh, and it's nice to have a couple different irons so you don't have to wait to change the tip out. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, A.K. Martinez says the translucent glass is a little bit harder. Uh, can't seem to get those uh, clear ones. Yeah, because you know. it actually that etches it, doesn't it? Yeah. So the other ones, you can't see that etch, so they clean up easier. Yeah. Julie Rickard says she uses a black light to, in a dark room to see the tin side. The tin side will appear milky. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> I knew there had to be a simple way to do it because, you know, we all have black lights laying around. Yeah, I mean, you've got to have a black no, light. You've got to have a black closet light. Somewhere. In your, well, we definitely have. <laughs> we definitely have, uh, yeah, our ultra, ultraviolet lights will show. will yeah. do the same thing. That's yeah. great. Thank you so much for that. And I hope that our glass community took note of that because yeah, that's really that's a, a good. Secret. That's a secret. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Um, are your sleeves cut proof? The ones you've been wearing? The ones to... that I've been wearing? No, they are not. They are, they are 100% cotton. Well, they're 99% cotton, 1% uh, lycra or something. Lycra. That's, lycra. Mm -hmm. So they stretch around my arms. I really, really enjoy having them. And, and believe it or not, y'all, I feel as if they take the fatigue down from me cutting all day of, uh, just by wearing those sleeves. But the, the main reason I'm wearing those sleeves is because, you know, my arms are all beat up and they're scarred up. And, and I think it's a good thing for me to wear those sleeves, not only to protect my arms from any more damage, but to protect your eyes from the damage. <laughs> so anyway, it's a good thing for all of us. And, and it does work. And guess what? Barb's going to be making those. We have the sleeves. Yeah, and she's going to be tied down. I have the long so. ones yet. Yeah. A little something to, uh, I like the long ones because they yeah. cover my sleeves and I don't get everything. And I, the oh, long ones. and an apron, I don't get dirty. Oh, and that's right. Hey, guys, guess what? We had a shipment of new aprons come in last oh, we'll week. Wear, we'll wear a new one next week. Yeah, so we got, our aprons are in. They're available on our website at conwayglass.com. And I uh, just thought I'd let y'all know that. Yeah, got big pockets. You'll like it. Yeah. 100% cotton. And they are printed by a craftsman. They're yeah. not printed at a regular old No, we didn't. Shop. Yeah, they're not pr printed somewhere over the internet. They're printed by a, a true craftsman here in Conway and uh, by a dear friend of ours. So. Yeah, the old fashioned way on a printing press with his hand. Print. Well, we like old school, so. So it's a real old school, so it's pretty cool. Okay, any more questions? Put them in the chat with a Q. Please do. And if Ed, if you want to do a something, something <clears throat> glass chat, do we want to do a glass chat or do we want to do a... Well, I, uh, I have this really pretty glass here behind us. I'm going to slide over to the side. Okay. This is a beautiful glass. And I, I promised Magali that I would have a sunset piece of glass. And she's not here. Because we're working on... So, oh, sorry, Magali, you don't have to watch it, but this one's for you, girl. She'll watch it tomorrow. She'll watch it tomorrow. <laughs> Hey, I hope the whole family. Oh, you know what? Well. She might be on the road. She might be. She because okay. she was heading home, right? I don't know. She was still on vacation. Anyway, so this is this is one of the beautiful sunset glasses that we're that we're using in the next set of windows coming up for the uh, Merle's Inlet project. This glass, this is an Armstrong glass, y'all. And I know I'm showing you glasses that you can't get your hands on, but I'm showing you glasses also that these glasses are available similar. 
in structure by different manufacturers. Wismac makes a glass. Wismac makes a beautiful glass, very similar to this. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we hope Wismac will be making Armstrong. But anyway, this is an iridescent. So as the sky comes up, the iridescence will move forward in a lower latitude of the window so that as we get up into the sky, the brightness is on the bottom like it is during the sun sunrise. And as the sky gets brighter, the blues turn at the top. So this is an Armstrong, an AO165I, which means it's a 165 uh, orange and amber streaky, and um, it's iridized, y'all. And it is a absolutely beautiful piece of glass. When and you may be able to see it differently if I turn the light out. Let me see. Mm. No, really can't see when that. He, I'm sorry. Okay. When he cuts that glass to go in the window, we'll be showing a video of we'll that. We'll be doing glass. a short. And you'll be light. able to see what it really looks like uh, while it's on the table and then when it's cut. Yeah, because it, this is a, coming up it's a 32 by 40. I, I can't pick it up and set it on the table here for y'all. But it is a beautiful glass. And it is just, oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's going to do what we want it to do. And, you know, so as you can see by my clothes tonight, I'm a little partial to pinks and cranberries and reds tonight. And I have a, I have a real special piece of glass that we're going to be cutting up, and it, it matches my, uh, my clothing. So, um, so I thought it'd be special since I was wearing pink that we would cut up pink. And you're showing pink. And so I'm showing pink. Coordinated. I'm feeling pretty good. And I didn't have anything pink, so I'm sorry. She Maybe Barbara next doesn't time. need anything pink. She's beautiful in blue. <laughs> so next week we'll try to color coordinate. Oh, it's okay, huh? Okay. We're good. All right. We're good. So, so yeah. before we do the glass cutting demo, just kind of let's do throw a couple things in there if y'all want to see me cut something that will help you in your endeavors of cutting glass. I will uh, try and at least try. And, and get it out and show you how to get it out if it's something that's really crazy. Um, but yeah, so tonight we're cutting pink glass. We're also, guess what? We're also gonna be cutting bevels. Okay. We're gonna show you how to cut bevels. And oh, you, you know, when you ask if you can there grind you down, uh, most of your bevels, y'all, the bevel, your stock bevels that you buy from, um, say, Sunshine Glassworks, who carries a ton of different sizes and shapes, um, are three sixteenths of an inch thick. So after you cut that bevel to put it in the side or whatever, you can lay the edge on your grinder and shrink that edge down. Unless you have a beveling machine, uh, a hand beveling setup that Inland used to provide for their grinders, you won't be able to actually bevel the glass and polish it. But you can always cut the glass and then grind it down so that it will fit into your number two lead or your high heart lead or will also look really nice um, with um, your copper foil. I'm sorry, I took up a lot more time than no, I needed to. No, you're going to show us how to cut them. You better believe it. <clears throat> and also, uh, Texas Tom wants to know, do you make the bevel? Do we make bevels? Do we make bevels? I, not, not, not anymore. I am... Uh, I learned how to hand bevel on a hand beveling machine back in the mid 70s, to late 70s, I guess 78, 79. I learned how to bevel and I haven't forgot it. And I just, it's just that the equipment was so uh, antiquated. Labor intensive. Labor intensive, yeah. So, so like this little one and a half, one and a quarter by a four inch bevel, if you did this by hand, would be about $70 if you did it by hand. Um, but what we used to do with the beveling equipment, Texas Tom, is that we would, we would do like, for instance, say you ordered a bevel cluster and while you were putting it together, you broke one of the parts. That's where we came in because you didn't have to buy the whole bevel cluster. You just had to send us the pattern and we would make the part for you. So save you a little bit of money. Yeah, so if when you're thinking of, at it at that way, but we also used to um, bevel our own windows. We used to when we we used to make our own quarter inch glue chip, and we would make it in pink and blue and green, and then we would bevel those colors into seashells and 
mermaids and all those crazy things. And this, y'all, this was all back in the 80s. <laughs> in the late 80s. I, I don't have any beveled windows that I have pictures of, but I have a whole neighborhood full of them uh, within five miles of my shop. So. <laughs> a whole neighborhood. Oh, There's like 700 yeah. houses over there, isn't it? Yeah. And every well, house in it has a sidelight. When we got flooded out of our business in 1990? Nine. 1999. 99. Our beveling equipment, it didn't get all the way flooded. Because it we was had, elevated. It was but. elevated. So, uh, but at that time we decided not to keep doing that particular part right. of our business. So we sold that to someone. I think they in were Baltimore. In, in Baltimore. They're in Baltimore. And uh, so, yeah, look up hand beveling. If you in, need it. In Baltimore, because before that gentleman gave me my check, I taught him how to bevel. So that it's really an interesting process, but uh, very hard on your hands after years of doing it. I can imagine. Y'all see my baby yes, girl? She's, she's, she's here. right here. Hi. She's right here. Hi, sweetheart. I love you. She's too. so sweet. What are I you know. doing? What? She wants another treat. Okay. You can have a one. treat. Have There's a treat. one in the kitchen on the table. Don't knock my light over. Go ahead. Anyway, so she's really sweet. <laughs> and, uh, what? Is, so I tell her not to light the light. She goes and sticks her nose in. Hey, baby. She's just so good. So, yeah, we we do we used to make bevels, but we don't we don't do bevels anymore. Okay. Well, you okay. wanted me to do a close up, and you can show how to cut those bevels. Yeah. Well, let's and, show uh, how pretty this. Yeah. Pink let's glass. do that. What do you want to do? You you're the man. You show. Them. Look at this. You show show them. <laughs> this is beautiful. This is a Tule beautiful Studios, piece of glass. Tule Studio says when they see bevels, they think eighties. <laughs> yeah. I think 80s. That's another one of those things that um, that I learned to do a very long time ago. So hey, y'all, this is. Uh, can you see that? Not really. Can you see that? Better. No. Yeah. I guess. Can no, not that? at all. Hang on, y'all. Let me grab. Let me something. get that green. Let me get that out. Let me see if I can. If I, if you can. See. Uh, uh, no. Uh, I just don't think that's going to work. Right. It's not going to work. But anyway, so... Big piece of glass and I'll take it away so they can kind of see. All right. I, I can hold it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Let's see if that helps. All right. So so your, your bevel glass, uh, most of your glass comes 3 sixteenths thick with a, with a half inch bevel on it on all four sides. So when you're cutting this glass, you, you really do, you need your, your running pliers. And I'm going to use my, my Silber Schmitz tonight. And I'm going to show you uh, that these pliers are just as nice. Actually, I think they're better than other pliers. But for doing what they do, just because they have a deeper jaw and it eliminates some rainbow cuts. So I've got my cutter here. This is just a pencil grip brass cutter. So when you're cutting a bevel, you can just you can cut it off. What you want to do, you, you don't want to cut it on the front side unless it's mirrored. If it's mirrored, then you can cut it on the front side where the bevel is and you just you roll right over top of the bevel. And you use your pliers and you cut it. <clears throat> now look at the profile on this bevel. 15 degrees, flat, 15 degrees. That bevel is not gonna be any more than that on any piece of glass. It's not gonna be more than 15 degrees because it costs too much money to run the rest of that. So if we want, if we want to do this, we're just gonna strip it right down the middle. But this time, we're going from the back where it's perfectly smooth and we're coming off, and then we're going up, and we're gonna split our bevel just like that, y'all. Okay? And if when you when you split that bevel and you get these little shark's teeth and on your plate glass, you're pushing too hard. Remember, it doesn't matter what you're cutting, you wanna cut with the same amount of pressure all the time. Okay? Great. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. There you go. Hey. Here's your pink glass. That's my pink glass. Guess who's guess who's here tonight? 
Larry Mary. Larry Mary. Hey, Larry. Larry wants to know, when using a heavy textured glass, do you grind the edge with a rip, ripple bit on your grinder to bevel the edge so it can be foiled with not as many gaps? Hey, Larry, you know what? I didn't even know they made a ripple bit, <clears throat> but I use my regular bit. I stand the glass up on its edge, and yes, I eliminate a lot of those uh, ripples and textures so that my foil will stick to it, yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't um, honestly, I didn't know they made a ripple bit. Or is that just what you what you call a uh, like a speed bit or something? Or, uh, but yeah, I didn't know that they they made that. But yeah, I do on all of my textured glasses. If I'm foiling them, they have to be up on their edge and ground so that I can get the foil to wrap around correctly. That's a great idea, and that's a great uh, prod like something. It's a great thing to tell our viewers so that they understand when they do mo work with uh, textured glass that it's possible to stand that piece of glass up on your grinder, eliminate that texture around that edge where you need to foil and make it work so that it looks really nice. So that's a great, it's a great question, Larry, and it's also um, a good answer. Yeah, that is. So uh, I think I saw another message come up, but it's not, it's not showing up right there, so I'm gonna wait a minute. Um, okay, I don't see it. Texas Tom, did you have a mess, uh, question? So it just disappeared, so I don't know what's happening. Oh, he okay. must be rewriting it. Are you rewriting it in Texas? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. We had a question about the pendants. Oh, that's right. Well, yo, yeah, because remember, too, when we first started the RDRV channel, we used to have a, a giveaway once a month. Yeah. And um, so now we're doing, you know, live four nights a month. And uh, so here we are. We're going to, I'm going to, we're going to show you just a couple simple ways to make simple jewelry to maybe help you increase your bottom line when you're doing these uh, festivals, given another price point item for a different clientele at the festival. And it's a good way to use your scrap glass. Right. Because we use ours all the way down to, I mean all the way down to these little small pieces the pretty ones okay so, so let's go to and the close up. and the best thing yeah okay the best thing that i found is the textured glasses make really really pretty pendants mm -hmm. just a one single piece of textured glass just cut into a shape and then you fire it in your kiln now, if you're using uh, Bullseye or Euroboros, you don't need to um, uh, spray the vertification spray on it, or what's called Spray A, because you, you're going to take these pendants up to about 1,350 degrees. What you want to do is you want to roll these edges so they're not sharp and they're polished. And you can do just one piece of glass, you don't, then you don't have to worry about coefficiency of expansion. You don't have to worry about any of that. One single piece of eighth inch glass in your kiln, put a pendant bail on it, and now you have an absolutely gorgeous piece of glass and you are upcycling mm -hmm. your, uh, your stained glass project. I just wanted to show them the back. Oh, yeah. So these are readily available. So at, these bales... At your stained glass supplier. Yeah, these are, are Anoraku. Uh, they are... Sunshine sells them. They come 25 bales to a pack. Mm -hmm. And um, and you use E6000. Everybody's got E6000 just sitting in a drawer in their studio. Mm -hmm. So you use E6000. Do it the way the directions say. And this thing won't come off unless you actually just beat it off of there. So it's really a great way to make pendants. It's a great way to uh, increase your bottom line. It shows, mm -hmm. and then yeah. And what we do is so this is yeah. Oh, go if ahead, we're show them, working on a special project, so y'all remember the Brook Green project. So if we're working on a special or the live project, oak. we'll make these for our client if they're you know a public place or something like that. And it tells about what we installed, and then we use glass from the project. And so it's a nice little me memento for their gift shop or... Um, right, so we put a card in there. We put a photograph of the window 
a section of the window. Actually, the the really beautiful section that Barbara painted the Carolina Wren in is this section here. So yeah. anyway, so and then we put that in a baggie in an envelope with the story and the picture, and uh, our customers are happy. The uh, the people that donated the window are happy, and. Uh, the gift shop. It's is a happy. gift shop is happy. So just a little something to help help you add to your bottom line, if you need a little something to do, and you can just do one or two at a time in a, um, a microwave kiln if that's all you have. Don't you don't have to rush out and get another kiln. Just do two at a time if that's what you can. If yeah. that's all you can do. It's just something right? else to offer your uh, customers. Wear one, sell one. Wear one, sell one. That's right. They sell the one right off your neck. Here you go. Sure. Okay. Um, you, uh, let's go on to a glass cutting demo if you'd like. Okay, we can. If you have a question, put it in the comments in the chat with a Q. And it's good to see you, everyone. And I think Ed's going to do another demo. Well, I'm just going to show him this glass because okay. first I'm going to show you the back. And I think you can see it if I tilt it up. Mm -hmm. You can see that? It's not shiny at all. That's the light. It's kind of a dull matte finish. Now when I flip this over and I'm going to hold it up to the light again, this side is shinier, okay? This is this this is what I'm calling the smooth side even though it's textured. So as I roll across this glass, I want you to listen to it because same pressure start to finish. And that, y'all, is the Look at the edge on that. You think that glass is crazy or what? Look at the edge on that. You see all the ripples, all the bows and everything in that? But uh, but just so that you know, and that's all of this sheet that I'm going to cut up. But just so that you know, when, you, when you're cutting different textured glasses and they're textured on both sides, don't be afraid to, to cut the glass. Just slow down. And if you get stuck in a pothole, drive yourself out of it. Okay, now your, your, your running pliers or your silver schnitz will not run that that far with those curves. But we can do it from here, like this. And we'll run it right into each other. And this is so beautiful. But remember, when you're cutting textured glasses, they, they are going to be rolly on one side, rough, bumpy on the other. And sometimes you'll even, you'll even run into a pothole. Don't lift up on your glass cutter. And I really can't say that enough. I probably say it too much. But drive out of that pothole and usually, and then turn your glass around Break it from the hot end or the end you just finished on. And most of the time, y'all, your glass is going to break. The so right way. The right way, yeah. <laughs> most, you know, glass is going to break no matter what. But if most of what we want it to do is, is to break the right way. So, you know, in, in uh, closing up our, our glass chat, that is exactly what you want it to do. And if you'll take your time, if you'll take your time cutting glass then you will absolutely become more proficient and not just in your sleep, okay? So let's try that again. Let's see how thin I can get. Let's see if we can get this off of here. Watch this. There we go. We got it that time. That's pretty good. Okay. So if I would have just clowned around and just like playing around cutting glass, and not actually doing it the correct way, that probably wouldn't have broke like that, okay? So, um, I know sometimes you think, y'all think I'm wasting glass, but we really use this stuff for other things. <laughs> okay, Barb, let's go back to the main camera. Okay. And see if we have a nice demo. Oh, thanks, Ray. Hey, buddy. Nice demo, Ray. Uh, thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. So, it, keep in mind, too, you know, when you're cutting bevels, if you have to do them, um, you want to definitely make sure that 
your surface, work surface is clean. I would prefer if you cut a bevel to cut it on a paper towel so you don't scratch it. Bevels are very soft. The other thing you can do to eliminate the, the scratching process is just to put some contact paper on it while you're working with it and then you can peel that off. And, uh, or masking tape. Yeah, masking tape. On the top the masking the tape, you definitely don't leave it on overnight no. to short. But do something to protect your bevel if you need to grind it. And I found that uh, contact paper works the best. And maybe painter's tape, but it probably wouldn't last as good as contact yeah, paper. Yeah, contact paper, you just stick it on there, cut around just, it. And as gotcha. soon as you're done, peel, peel it off, you know, and you haven't scratched the bevel. Just keep in mind, because bevels, y'all, are so soft, and they will scratch so easy. Just be careful. Texas Tom wants to know if you like your Sybil. I do. Silver Texas Tom. Schnitz. My Silver Schnitz. I do like my silver schnitz. And, uh, for, he doesn't like his. Well, I like them for a couple different reasons. The, the main reason that I like them is they have a jaw that's much deeper than the regular jaw. And the other thing, I like the way they feel in my hand, but I, I still use my, my mini runners that I, that I have that you all have seen me use for years. They're still on the light box for right now anxiously awaiting my arrival tomorrow morning to start cutting glass <laughs> but yeah so i like i like my silver schnitz and um and i want to thank bowl america for sending us a pair to try them out i do like them barbara put them on our on our website are they on our website they're, they're in our, our amazon shop and they were on sale in for 60. prime for 62 dollars so check our store, they may still be on sale for $62. You know, here, I did post that somewhere yeah. for people. But. And here's the thing, y'all. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I, I, it doesn't bother me to have two or three of something because technically I do have three different, completely different pair of running pliers. And you know what? I'll share those with y'all next week. I'll share my runners with you. Oh, that'd be nice. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you. I mean, I'm just making a note. It's always nice to... I keep this paper right here, and it allows me to write notes over here and that y'all can't see. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we're gonna, I'm going to share my running pliers with you because I have, I have three different pair, and they do three different things. Now you have four or no? No, three. Okay. This was three. I used to only have two, but now okay. I have my silver schnitz. And, okay. Okay, let me see. I got a question here. Okay. What is the glass you're cutting? The, per, the pink glass. What What was it? Okay, this is... Another. This is a Chicago art glass. But the same color is available in Wismac. It's a SPL. I believe it's a... I believe it's a... No, I don't want to give you the wrong number, but it's an SPL. Sunshine just, would know. Just, yeah, call Sean and tell him you're looking for a cranberry... Or, or a, a pink and white uh, streaky. This isn't an opal, y'all. It's a streaky. Let me show it's it to you. It's got a lot of clear in it. It's got a lot of clear. And it, if it were a Kokomo, okay, if it, if it were a Kokomo, it would have an LL in it because it's got so much clear. But this, you can get this. Wismac does make this glass. And uh, I'm pretty sure Sunshine's got it. But it is a pink and white streaky uh give give sean a call get him to send you a sample of it and uh, or look on whiz max page pull a part number and then call sean and see if they have it but from what i understand from sunshine they just got a couple tractor trailer loads of whiz max glass in and they also have uh, sales on some of whiz max uh what they call their pony packs or their rack packs uh the pony pack is 150 sheets of glass oh yeah 12 by 14, I believe. Look on their web website. Yeah, see check what it have. out. Check it out. So, yeah, if you're doing classes, stuff. if you got classes coming up, that it's might... Sunshine Glass, right? Yep, it's okay. at Sunshine. Give them a call. Yeah, give them a call. They got a lot of good deals going on this month. Okay. Uh, Rick says he has to remember to hold his silver schnitz at the end of the levers. Otherwise, they are hard to get a run started. Yeah, you, you gotta pull that that's what that little that little dip is in the handle. That's that's for a finger. Cause I, I tried it too. I tried to uh 
I tried to, you know, hold it up a little bit closer like I do my six and a half inch runners. And you can't you can't get a run started like that. So That's a good It's a good it's a Texas good, Tom. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I I, I, I love my little Yeah, I love my little silver schnitz. Only because I think they're an asset to my tool arsenal. That's what I think. Okay. A.K. Martinez wants to know... Oh, okay. No, I have another question. I'll go back up. But A.K. Okay. Martinez wants to know, is it rolled? Why is it bumpy on one side? Well, then when they roll the... When, they, when the glass comes out of the rollers, it goes on to a mat. The mat has, is what has the texture, not the roller. Because the glass is moving, it's being pulled. And it's rolling out at the same speed that it's being pulled. But the, the texture is on the mat. Mary's saying hi to all y'all. She is? She looks like she's sleeping. No, she was just looking upside down at everybody. Okay, I had another question I kind of skipped over. Let me find it for us. Is lead-free solder uh, an alternative for glasswork? Uh, lead-free lead -free solder is typically used in jewelry making. Oh. Uh, it's a little harder to work with because... Can you use a higher temperature? Much higher, yes. Okay. Well, what if it's silver? Is that still higher? I would think so, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know because I don't use lead-free solder for, for it anything. It is available. But it yes. is available. Oh, yeah. It's available. And it is an alternative, yes. Yeah, it, you just work with it a little bit hotter, that's all. It'll, uh, you know, make sure you flux everything that you're going to do, and, and it, it does work, so... Okay, guys, if you have It's just really expensive, too. Keep that in mind. But you know what? If you have some sort of an allergy or maybe, maybe a you're a sensitivity or maybe you're uh, pregnant or maybe going to be pregnant or aren't sure quite yet but want to lay off the lead for a while, which is understandable. So just be really careful um, with that, you know, and, yeah. and do um, definitely check with your doctor, of course. So. Mm -hmm. So, um, Texas Tom said he'd try again with the... Give him a bias. try again. And you know what? I think it's one of those things, Tom, that you just got to you gotta just sit down and, uh, and not have anything else going on around you and play with them a little bit. You know, start out small. I, I just, I like the way that it eliminates some of my rainbow cuts because I'm cutting these windows that I'm working on now with the Merle's Inlet Project. There's a lot of inside stuff. And these seem to be working uh, much better uh, on the... Sh on the long term rather than the short term with my other pliers. So, you know, cause I'm, I'm not even having to pick up the grousers to take out inside curves as long as I'm using these and I'm adjusting that, that, uh, that top head as I go. I just really, I just really like being able to control the pliers instead of them controlling me. Well, we have 10 more minutes. And we do. My and golly so, gosh. if you want to cut some more glass, if you guys have some more questions, we have a few more minutes and we have time to answer. Right, right. Well, you know, that's good. And uh, I, I can share an, another little bevel with you guys. This is just a little inch and a half by inch and a half bevel. And let's just say most of the time when you cut this bevel, you're going to want to cut it this way. Corner to corner, okay, corner to corner, corner to corner. And now we're gonna just take our Sybil, Sybil Schnitt, Silver Schnitt. Silver. And we're gonna put them right there and we're gonna pop it down. Okay. So now you can put these in the corners. All you have to do is just grind this edge down a little bit enough to get it either copper foil on it or get it into the lead channel. But it's such an easy way. Working with bevels, y'all, changes your work. It allows you to charge more for your work because, of course, the bevels are more expensive. So you get to charge more for your work. The pieces are already cut. So you're, you're charging more work, and it cuts your labor down. I like it. Yeah. Cuts your labor down. But do remember, it doesn't matter where you get those bevels from, and Sunshine stocks quite a few of them. It doesn't matter where you get the bevels from. They are not going to fit that pattern correctly, period. 
So be really careful when you start removing some of the glass from some of the pieces because when you get to the other end, it might not fit at all. So fit your bevels before you start fabricating your window. That's a, that's a, I mean, that's the only thing that you I can say to, to do. Mark. Don't, don't rely on that pattern they sent you to fit those bevels. When yeah, you, that, that pattern was thing, drawn, then it was blown up. And you know what happens when you blow things up? Everything changes. So the first thing you might want to do, of course, you, you take care of your bevels when you just lay your pattern out, put your bevels on that pattern, and you will see what exactly what we're talking about. And they, are not gonna, they are not going to fit. Yeah. So then fit your, pa your bevels to your to pattern. To your pattern. And the pattern, you know, the pattern that they give you with your bevels, you're going to use that in your window, but then you need to make sure those bevels fit that pattern and then proceed forward because y'all there's nothing worse than the a nightmare of the, some of the bevels not fit correctly and but you've already done the outside so make the beveled window fit and then work to it uh joan marrow wanted to know what is the scrub daddy paste cleaning and that was a.k martinez's glass tip. huh it was her tip her her uh glass that she's been trying to clean she bought a load of glass and that had, had been, been water weathered. damaged <laughs> had and been had weathered, dirt yeah. and, and water marks on it and so she's been cleaning it and she found the scrub daddy and the scrub daddy paste works very well right on the opaque glass on the opaque it's not doing so well on the transparent but but it, the transparent glasses when they get to that point they are they're etched they are actually etched and it's really hard to get off so now you can ak i don't know if you have a kiln but you know you can fire that glass and that'll all disappear. It'll come back to life for you. Try that on the transparent and see if that helps get that watermark out. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's real clean, but then fire it. Let us know if that works. Oh, you you have a kiln, I think, right? I think she does. Or she knows someone that Yeah, has I think one. she knows someone that has one. Try taking like a 12 by 12 AK and just and clean it the way you're cleaning it. And if it's still got that watermark on it, just see if your friend would fire that for you because I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's on the surface and that will burn off. And that yeah. glass, because it's all uh, bullseye, I think, anyway, that she got was a lot of it was bullseye and your oh, burrows. Oh, she so. got some, I think she got some antique. Yeah, oh, you blown. got a bunch of hand blown GNAs and yeah. FNAs. Yeah. That's yeah, so beautiful. give those a shot. <laughs> Man, those glasses are so beautiful. You definitely are... want to try, yeah. Yeah, incredible. Okay, if you have a question, just put it. we got six minutes left. Hey, I hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, the We have, we're, we're pretty much done with the smoke from the fires in Canada. Are, on the, are on they? The, on the east coast Thanks down here where we are. Uh, but in the upstate, uh, in the western part of the state, the... Uh, the smoke is kind of bad coming down the Appalachian Mountains. So, so how is the smoke in Canada? I mean, are they? It must be pretty rough, I would think, over on the so eastern part. So, are they of, making any from progress? East. On... I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I know our friend in Canada was having a hard time. She'd been evacuated. Yeah, three and she's times. not here tonight. Uh, so I hope she's yeah, well. Rochelle, we hope you're doing well, hon. If you watch this later on. Oh, they're getting smoked out in PA. Y'all stay safe up there. They, Sorry to hear that. Wildfires are just crazy. Watch your, you know, watch your breathing. Stay inside if you can. Oh, Bobby's had bad smoke too. Oh wow, in Bobby! Montana. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Good to hear from you, Bobby. Sorry you're having those problems. That's got to be rough. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. You know, down here, we have what are called peat bogs, and it's just layers and layers of mulch. Ohio smoked out. And uh, when that that burns underground, and we had a significant fire here. It's nothing like what's going on in Canada, y'all. It's not. It's it wasn't that significant, but um, it was a it was a terrible thing, and it was like right across the swamp from us. So uh, we had a lot of bad smoke for several weeks. I can't imagine what y'all are going through. No, That's I can't terrible. Either. Well. Let's say a prayer for all those people yeah. that are suffering up in Canada, and um, we we'll all be don't forget. About you. Yeah, don't forget, Texas Tom. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Hope everybody has a great week. It is 
we got four more I minutes. I know, we're not if going you have anywhere. One more, if, we Jim, got, we could probably do two or three more questions. Yeah, we could if y'all really, got them. If y'all got some questions tonight, anything. Or you want to share anything? Having a heat wave in Albuquerque. Oh, my goodness, 140 degrees. Oh, my gosh, right now? That's crazy, Larry. Wow. That is crazy. A pack a day is what they say. The fires. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. People are mm, people are going to be sick if they don't clear. We need rain, I guess, is what we yeah, need. Yeah, I think we need a, a lot of rain, though. That's the dilemma that we're having is we need so much rain, y'all. Um, so we have a couple shorts coming out this week for you. Uh, Barb's working on another uh, uh, soldering video. Yeah, I'm still... I got sidetracked. We had some work come in, and I had to get Y'all is, busy. We're we're just really busy, and and it's all it's all good, and we're we're just really happy that we're busy, and that y'all share our lives, and your lives with us. We love it. I'll so. share some pictures of the lamps I've been working on. They're so pretty. He has to do one step in one of them, but the two should be finished tomorrow. So I'll uh, share those with you. Who makes the clear glass with the large bubbles? What how how big are the bubbles, Les? Because they're they're pretty big. They, there's a glass called Flemish that's got pretty good size, but then they're clear seedy. And uh, used to be a clear seedy glass. Yeah, it used to be a Spectrum. If that's the one you need, Les, I have access to it. Let me know. And uh, the other one used to be called uh, Dewdrop, and it has big bubbles, but it it was made by Pilkington. And it was also made by Spectrum, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I can if I have access to that less. But I do have access to clear CDs. So send me a, a picture. Send him a picture. Yeah, have have Lena or you send me a picture. You have my email. So. Uh, okay, people are excited to see about the lamps. 114 in Phoenix. Oh, oh my Larry, gosh. I'm sorry. Oh, Larry. Tornadoes that was a, that's a typo. Ontario. 104 sounded oh better. God. That sounds horrifying, Val. Val said snow, brown sky, and tornadoes in Ontario. Hot and humid. Oh. Okay. Look at her, Mom. She's so oh. big. <laughs> okay, you guys. Take care. We'll be thinking about you. Prayers to everyone out there, and uh, prayers for all the people working in those fires. And we'll see you next week. Monday night, 7 o'clock. Every Monday night. Thank you. Thank you, guys.